He's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. And just so many good stories he has written regarding the Colts and this run into regular season, into the postseason. Zach Kiefer from the Stars on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. If you're a betting guy right now, and, and, and given what's taking place, you got some insubordination, you got bent feelings, and it doesn't look like anything's going to get any better. I mean, maybe the off-season things get band-aided over, but if you're a betting guy, what do you think Antonio Brown ends up next year, Zach? It'd be hard for me to see him playing anywhere besides Pittsburgh. Um, it's, 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 it's January. There's a long way to go. He's got a huge cap hit. He's still one of the top five players in football. Um, just really hard for me to see them moving him. What do you even ask for when you trade Antonio Brown? I mean, like, what's the – how many first-round picks can you get? Yeah, I, I get that. I do. Um, <laughs> I guess it depends. I mean, it depends. It's, like, unprecedented. Who has the le- – who has the – I mean, who would have the leverage in this? I mean, how much leverage does Art Rooney II have? If indeed and, – and listen, there's nothing definitive that they're going to shop him, but he said everything but releasing their star wide receiver would be on the table. So that, to me, sounds like they're shopping him. And you got people in Pittsburgh in the know suggesting that he's not going to be around next year, and this is kind of a goodbye. I mean, would this be something that the Colts would investigate regardless of what transpires the rest of the way? Aye, right, so, so we're moving from one Steeler who's on his way out to the next. Um, no Le'Veon Bell, but maybe Antonio Brown. Look, you know, I'm going to be the last person to knock his talent. I mean, he, he's torched the Colts for years. We've seen that. Everybody knows what he can do. But I wonder what his price will be, as we were just talking about, in relation to the locker room headaches that he's caused. And Mike Tomlin's a guy that handles it probably better than most if not better than anybody, in terms of putting up with the BS in the locker room. And even he couldn't get them to work through this. And it's not just this blow-up with Big Ben in the last week of the regular season. I mean, you remember the Facebook Live posting, and he's, he's beeped with reporters, called some of them racist. In the hey, he, he's, been over... insubor- he's, he's been insubordinate, and that with most right. guys would be a deal-breaker. If you're the Colts, why take the risk? I'm not saying you don't need receiver help. I'm saying you do. But the way they're building this locker room, and and look, the one thing that that I'll say about Chris Ballard is everything he says, he believes. He doesn't just give you BS. He doesn't just fill your quote sheet with cliches. When he says the locker room means a lot, he means it. And look at what this team has done this year. I mean, it's the best locker room I've ever ever covered. And and look what they've done this last 10, 12 weeks. Zach Kiefer joins us. Where does... Where does locker room cohesion matter with Chris Ballard, with, with Jim Ursay, and with Frank Reich and this organization right now on the pecking order that, that things elite level matter with this team? If you don't think that the players knew that Ryan Grigson and Chuck Pagano weren't getting along, and that's a very, very nice way to say it, weren't getting along, if you don't think the players didn't know that, you're crazy, they did, um, it absolutely matters. And in guys talk about it a lot and it's an easy story to, to spin but I'm telling you right now I see it and, and I, I don't work for the Colts and they're not paying me I see it every day this team has bought in they bought into what Frank Reich's saying they bought into the one and oh mantra um, it's not just coach speak this team really has come together Eric Ebon might have put it best he said look we just had to learn how much we hated losing um, and they were, you know, a play here against the Bengals. They were a play here against the Eagles. They were a play here against, you know, a lot of those teams when they started one and five. And when they started to see it work against the Bills and against the Raiders, and when they started to buy into the offensive line, I mean, I think Ryan Kelly told me last week after the game, he said, look, Frank came up to us before the Bills game and said, we're going to be a run first team. And when it worked, they really bought into what he was saying. Um, I'm buying Frank Reich this year, and I'm buying the locker room culture because I've seen it work with my own eyes. Yeah, and I mean that's exactly the philosophy the Pacers are going with too, and you know they're in their second straight year of that working out. Now, there's also, I guess, the facet of this where hey, Chris Ballard is a guy that thinks you know you can in a great rock, locker room still work in guys that have a, in this case, a. Uh, uh, somewhat, uh, you know, a, a sketchy 
past, if you know what I mean. I mean, and he's done right. that. He did that in Kansas City. He wasn't the decision maker there at the time, but he still did the investigation on guys like Marcus Peters. But it's just kind of interesting to see. And, and obviously they have a game. You want to talk about that on Saturday. But just some of the things when the NFL is that constant grind, just some of the things that you think about, obviously, at this time. Zach Kiefer, the star, is on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. Uh, was this something that you saw when they were 1-5? in five? Uh, A lot of people said they saw it. I don't buy a lot of people seeing it. But is this something that you saw maybe with, with this team coming together with a run possible considering the schedule and the way that schedule went throughout the season, second half-wise? Did you see this coming? No. I'd be lying if I told you I did. And I think a lot of people would be. Um, I saw them winning seven, eight games. I saw them making a run in the second half of the season that made this season a success. I think that's fair to say, right? I mean, you've got Andrew Luck, and he's healthy. Um, and I liked what Frank Reich was doing offensively the whole year. What I didn't see is the best offensive line in football. I mean, I knew they were going to be better, but this, but 18 sacks? No. Yeah. I didn't see that. And, and the one thing that no one's mentioning, or at least not mentioning enough, is Eberflus and what the defense has done. I mean, I was out in camp every day watching them, and they were just getting torched. And I know camp's not real football, but the defense was getting embarrassed every day. Andrew Luck, Jacoby Brissett, even Philip Walker some days. And I remember George Bremer of the Herald Bulletin and Anderson, he said one day, he said, defense has a ways to go just to be bad. I mean, that's yeah. where we were at. Um, we saw a little bit of Darius Leonard at camp, but we never saw this coming. I mean, defensive rookie of the year. Um, that's the, been the biggest surprise for me is, is, is find me a hole on the defense. Like, find me a weak spot because I don't think there is one right now. Well, and, I mean, and you're going to need it. You're going to need it all coming up on right. Saturday because this chief, chief defense is so so darn good. So you're going to need every single bit of it. All right, g- give me your thoughts on the Chiefs pre-Kareem Hunt getting kicked basically out of the league, and then now what we have seen since then. Because that's something that's not often talked about, but offensive output-wise with the stats they put up, that's a big deal. Yeah, and, and I was on KC Radio yesterday, and they're a confident bunch. I mean, they're, they're like, oh, it's, it's a cute story that the Colts made the playoffs and won a game, but <laughs> but this is our team, and this is our And I'm like, you guys, you guys know the Colts are good. Hey, what what, what like show really were you good. on? Because the one I was on at WHB, they're all puckered up because of the, the history of the Chiefs in right. the postseason and gagging. And, and, and so let me get this straight. I could be wrong here, but I don't think the Chiefs have beaten a lot of good teams this year. I think they beat two playoff teams, and they skidded down the stretch. I yeah. mean, they were not the dominant force. They were earlier in the season. And what does that sound like? Does that remind you of anything in the past? Maybe a Colts team or two, yeah. you know, back in the Peyton Manning days? Um, the one thing you have to say is the Colts defense has played so good of late, but the one thing they haven't seen is, is, is this kind of quarterback. Um, they haven't given up a lot of big plays. That's what the Chiefs thrive on. Um, they shut down Barkley. They shut down Hopkins. They shut down Elliott. They haven't seen a really, really, really good quarterback since maybe Brady in week five, and he put up 40 on them. Um, but at the same time, I think, I think the pressure's on Kansas City. They're at home. There's the history. And I think if Marlon Mack gets going and it gets, gets into the, you know, the, the rhythm that the offense can get in with him going well, yeah. um, I really like the Colts' chances. I'm not saying they're going to win, but I just think it's a good matchup for Indy if the defense can maybe force a turnover or two. I, I got an interesting question for you here before I let you go. Zach Key for the stars on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. I, I gather this from being on Kansas City Radio yesterday, or actually today, and having them on with me yesterday. Is yeah. I think there's there's a few over there that wish that Chris Ballard was still in the organization, especially considering the way that John Dorsey got jettisoned. You know what I mean? It kind of feels like a little bit that they, they wish that they would have – that maybe they held on to the wrong guy, for lack of a better description. Wouldn't you? I mean, um, I think well, I think it's I a mean, slam they're, dunk. They're the one seed, though. I mean, do they? Right. I, I know it's easy to feel that way because everybody around here feels really good about the future. But they are the one seed, and they've done quite well personnel-wise, to to say the least. But who put that team together? 
Well, I mean, Chris was Chris was a part of that, but the guy, I mean, the guy that made the final decision along with Andy Reid, and we know that Andy Reid was probably making the final decision, but you know, John Dorsey's now in Cleveland. I mean, he was he was part of that team. Right. Right. No, but that's what I'm saying. Chris and, and John Dorsey put that team together for the most part. They've had some misses the last couple of years in the draft, and that's why their defense is shaky. Um, the way I understand it is so Chris takes the Colts job in January of 2017, and then Dorsey sort of mysteriously leaves yeah. under some weird terms in like, June, in like June. It was a really weird time. It's like a really quiet part of the NFL schedule. If Dorsey leaves back in January, that's Chris's job. I think that's, exactly. a, I think that's a no-brainer. Yeah. I, I yes. mean, he had been interviewed for two GM posts. He had turned down several teams. Um, it was about picking his spots, and he was really picky about where he was going to take over. And he was really drawn to the Ursay family and in the Midwest as well. I think that's a no-brainer. He's the GM in, in Kansas City if Dorsey leaves at a more opportune time, which is crazy to think about. Um, I'm not saying Brett Veach hasn't done a great job. I mean, look at Patrick Mahomes. He was in on Patrick Mahomes early, but so was Chris. Chris scouted him his last year in Kansas City and went to a lot of Texas Tech games. So, um, you know, and I wrote about this this week. The craziest thing about all this is, this is not supposed to happen this fast. I mean, this is supposed to be a two, three year build. It was going to take a while for this defense to transition into the four, three for him to get the players that can produce. Um, and the one thing I've been hearing from a lot of players lately is, boy, it's amazing how much coaching matters. This, this, this staff has done an amazing job <laughs> yeah. at getting these guys yeah. to buy in and making them, putting them in positions to be really, really good. Um, and that's what coaching does. And, Look at what Eberflus and, and Frank Reich have done. Hey, and, and overall, that's what cohesion between the general manager and the coach can also do. And, and those that that said that there was no no big issues between the two back in the day are absolutely crazy. I mean, and ridiculously crazy because that's that's where it can lead you if they don't get along. Yeah, and, and a huge part of this is the ego factor. No doubt, Frank Reich does not have an ego. I mean, I cannot picture a guy who would have handled this situation better from the fact that he was the number two choice, yeah. and he rolled with that. And there's a lot of little things that matter. You know, there's a video of him and Eric Ebron on the sideline on Saturday, and Ebron says, thank you for bringing me here. And Frank says, we're here because of you. He always gives credit to the players, and that really, that really matters to them. Um, and it's a little thing like T.Y. Hilton. Like, Frank just trusts him. A lot of coaches would make T.Y. go out in the practice field with his ankle, Francis is like, I believe him. I know what you can do. Um, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let my ego not be a factor. And Chris is the same way. Um, you talk to Chris, and he gives his credit to the scouts. He gives his credit to Ed Dodds as number two. And, and that's just not how it was in the past here. Um, and it's just, it's just amazing how fortuitous it was for this team to land both of those two guys. Because you feel really good about the future with Chris Ballard calling the shots and with Frank Reich coaching the team. I agree, uh, and I mentioned this yesterday in closing, Zach, that uh, to me, I've mentioned this all along, that, that Frank Reich is, to me, very similar uh, in the way he goes about things to a guy that was on with me yesterday and out at the complex yesterday, and that is Tony Dungy. I mean, these guys, to me, they're very similar in that capacity, and that's, that's why things work around them because of that. Hey, great job as always. Thanks for being on the show, and, and your work has been just absolutely fantastic. Uh, especially recently with all the breakdown you have done. Thanks a lot, my friend. I appreciate it, and we'll look for you out in Thanks, KC. John. We'll catch up with you next week. Zach Kiefer of the Stars on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline.